Uh, we've just gone through a change in our speaker, and that brought everybody's attention to the language that's in our rules on how we address changes in the speakership. And so the, the resolution that I'm offering is designed to accomplish a couple of important objectives that I think most of us agree on. One is to ensure that the process is smooth and that we don't interrupt our proceedings and our business doesn't grind to a halt while we make a change. And that objective is accomplished by making it clear that the majority leader continues to serve on an interim basis until a new speaker is elected. And under our current rules, the majority speaker, majority leader serves as the interim speaker only until we reconvene. So this provides a smooth transition to enable the majority leader to continue to serve and so we can continue our function during that process. And this last year is an example of why that's important. As you may recall, we did not, as a body, adopt our first bill until February 9th. We shouldn't stop as a legislative body during this transition. And I would point out that other governments have that process, whether it's a lieutenant governor that steps in automatically or a vice president, and we should do the same here. The second is to a uh, portion of this resolution is to open up the process and make it more apparent and transparent. And that objective is accomplished by requiring those who are seeking to be our speaker, which is probably one of the most important and influential positions in this body, to be available in open session to answer questions about their goals and their objectives and their vision. All of us, when we ran for office, we went through that process, didn't we? We all stood up in public and we were all questioned, either at public events or by newspaper editorial boards or whatever, and we explained why we were running for office. And this portion of the resolution would extend that same type of common sense approach to selecting a speaker, subject to our normal rules of debate, meaning no more than 15 minutes at a time, and you know the rest of the scoop. The last component of this would allow each of us the usual and customary courtesy of two minutes to explain why we voted for or not for a particular candidate. And I found it astounding, Mr. Speaker, that on the simplest and most mundane resolutions, all of us have two minutes available to us to explain our vote. But on one of the most important votes that we take as a legislative body, none of us have the opportunity to speak for two minutes to explain why we voted on that critical vote. Now, I'll remind my colleagues, tomorrow we'll go through the process of selecting a region. And when we did it last year, you may recall, we had that opportunity for a debate over the goals and objectives and the background and experience of each candidate, as well we should. And after the vote, we had an opportunity to explain our vote, as well we should. So these recommendations that I'm making in this resolution just simply extend the usual and customary debate procedures and the opportunity to speak to the selection of a speaker which is clearly one of the most important votes that we'll take as a body. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for allowing me to explain this portion of the resolution.